Hola, hola, hola. Hola. Happy Sunday. How is everyone doing this week? I hope you're well. I hope you're safe. I hope your children are well and your family. Welcome back to another Parenting Live topic on my platform called In Any Link an online comprehensive tool on everything child care. This is called the e Annie Shuffle, so if you want to stand up and dance with me, feel free. This music was created for me by my nephew. His name is Joe, and his company is called Inspiring Minds Entertainment. Yeah. Oh, my, my dog, Mia, yeah, she wants my attention every time I do a lot. <laughs> yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Bienvenidos. Bienvenidos. Hola, Deb. There's someone else. I can't see who it is. Yeah. <laughs> I love this song. Thank you, Deb. This is my chair workout. Now I'm doing chair workout. <laughs> yes. All right. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome for another parenting topic week. Um, hopefully my title's up there. It is. So before I get started, if you've been watching this show week to week and you find that it's beneficial for you and maybe other parents that you know, go ahead and hit your share button um, to share it out with anyone that may be interested in hearing um, me speak about these parented topics. So let's start with my introduction. So my name is Shauna Hibbets, and I'm the creator of this platform, e Nanny Link. I am a bilingual early childhood specialist of over 25 years. Yo hablo español y yo hablo inglés también. In that time, I have joyfully cared for over 10,000 children. And so you can imagine how many families I have worked in my experience as well. So yes, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Bienvenidos a e Nanny Link. So today we want to talk about how to keep our children informed of current affairs, um, such as the health scare that's going on in the world right now. So let me start off by saying we live in a different world today. So uh, when I was growing up, um, children were not involved as heavily into current affairs as they are today. So because of social media, because of the screen world that we live in and the access that our children have the same way we have access to the world right now into our homes, um, has placed parents in a position where they're having discussions with their children that probably when they were coming up, normally they didn't have those types of discussions. It's just such a different world today. And in order to keep our children calm, relax, peace and harmony in our homes, we wanna make sure that we prepare them for big topics such as the health scare that's going on in the world today so that they're not worried or anxious or they're causing any additional anxieties for them because of what's happening in the world, because unfortunately our children take on a lot of um, how we feel, what we feel about things that's happening in the world and in our homes. And um, they're able to read us. They know when we're worried, they know when we're concerned. So we wanna make sure that uh, we are keeping them in the loop but on an age appropriate level. So for example, if you have a two year old, you wouldn't speak to your two year old the same way you would do your 11 year old. 
the same way you would do your 17 year old about what's going on in the world today. So um, the first thing to do, one of the steps that you wanna do when you need to speak about hard, hard topics such as the health scare, the children are at home, there's like no way that you can get away from speaking about this topic because they need to know something of why they're home from school, right? So the first thing you wanna do, no matter how old your children are, is you just wanna stay calm. You wanna stay calm about everything that's happening in the world and anything that has reached your baby's ears, you know, because sometimes they get information from the world now before they can get it from you just because of the world that we're living in. So you want to make sure that you stay calm in the process, right? Um, because our body language speaks volume and we don't want our children to get upset over what's going on um, when it's part of life, you know, what's going on. Um, the other thing you want to do is, um, so depending on the age of your child, you want to be, you know, the way you, the way you speak to your child, like I mentioned before, if you had a two year old, it would be a little bit different where you might just say things like some people are getting sick at this time. And so it's important for everyone to stay safe. So your preschool is closed. You need to stay home with mommy or daddy and, and we're going to um, continue practicing our safe health uh, practices that you know, such as hand washing and things of that nature. Your preteen, you may, you may get a little bit deeper with them. You may talk more about health and health concerns and um, practices that we do need to put into play like they already have been taught. And you want to, um, you know, they might ask deeper questions like how did this start? Um, how are they gonna stop it? You know, they're gonna come at you with some other types of questions than like your two or three year old may come. And some of your two and three year olds may come with some of the same questions as your preteen. And then your, of course, your teenagers, uh, young adults, you can have a healthy conversation around this on an adult level and just remind um, your teen of um, what to do to keep safe, to stay safe. So some of the things, um, that you can do at this time while your children are at home. There are some benefits to this. I know not going to work and not having someone maybe care for your child can be like a very challenging time for you. And I have been thinking about all of the parents that don't have the luxury of being at home and don't and can't take their work at home. That's another stress to the um, element. So I've been thinking about you and I'm hoping that you're able to do some collaborative child care services or, or something with neighbors or something with family that's able to help you continue to go into the office if you have to go into work and you still have someone to um, care for your child while your child is out of school. So some of the benefits from this is um, we, have some, we have some additional quality time that we can spend not only with ourselves but with our children. And um, I think this is a good time to up our self-care routine. So we're always talking about self-care for parents. We're always talking about self-care for our children. Hi, Charlotte, how are you? And so you want to, um, this is a really good time to implement um, your small pockets of self-care. This is a really good time to model uh, the behavior that you want from your child when it comes down to self-care. This is a really good time to up it. So say for instance, if you, have been kind of on and off of your vitamins. You know, this is a really good time to up your vitamins. This is a really good time to get try to get your rest, you know. And um, so these are some um, activities that you can do um, with your child um, at home, a modeling of nice self-care routine. And then maybe it could be implemented and it could be something that's weekly or something that's in, you know, you already have it so that when things like this happen, you and your family is already ahead of the curve because you're already doing the basic health practices that you should be doing in order to keep your home and your family safe at all times. Another thing that you want to do is um, you can find some, um, implement some activities. So I'm going to drop a couple of activities that I've written in the past um, in here. And uh that way you could have a couple ideas of what to do while you're at home with your child. 
Let's see if I can do this right. Yay. I think I did it right. So hopefully you see it there. There's some five, there's some spring activities in there that you can do for your with your children. Um, you can also go to like Pinterest. Um, Pinterest uh, have a, a slew full of activities that you could be doing at home with your children. I would encourage uh, some type of scheduling, a scheduling where you get your me time in, a scheduling where your children get their time in along also, I believe in rest periods, even for older children. Um, I believe in collaborative um, uh, activity, so doing an activity with your child. And I also believe in solo activity, your children doing an activity on their own. Even if they're two or three years old, you can still set out an activity, set a timer out, let them know this activity is for you. I'm going to be in the next room doing ABC, XYZ. I can hear you. Call me if you need me and let me know when you're done with the activity. It could be a puzzle. It could be, you know, something that they could self regulate on their own, give them a little timer if they're young, because I know there are a lot of children very happy to be at home with their parents because the best thing in the world for them is to be with their parents. So to have this opportunity for a lot of our young people, they are just thrilled over the moon. And the first thing they're thinking about in their minds is, yay, I get to spend time with my parents or I get to spend more time with whoever I live with or, you know, my grandparents, whoever it is that's the main caregivers of your children. They are ecstatic that they're at home and they'll be able to spend some additional time with you. And so you want to be able to have something in the schedule that represents that. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, another, another uh, lastly, I wanted to speak about um, emergency plans. Um, so when you go to work, you have emergency plans. When we went to school, children in school have emergency plans in place. Um, I wanted to propose that if you don't have one, to implement a, to implement a an emergency plan for home so that when things like this happen, um, children don't get um, hype, like they don't get, um, they don't get, the last thing we want is our children to get on the energy of what the world is doing, right? Right now, the world is like just, they're all over the place, right? For this healthcare. The more we prepare our children ahead of time for things like this, the more at ease they will be and they will be able to problem solve. And then eventually as they get older, when they see these things, it's like, oh, okay, there's some illnesses out here. We have to be quarantined at home. I, my, my parents put together a, a, a plan together for when these things happen and I know what to do. I know that I just have to do ABC, XYZ. That keeps the calmness in the home, that keeps everybody, you know, you know, together, basically. So implementing um, an illness plan or a fire drill plan, especially with the fire drills, you know, not to scare your children or anything, but you want your children to know if there is a fire, what to do at home. Because what you do at home, if you don't know what to do at home, I know they're learning it in school, but it doesn't mean that they will actually know how to do it at home. So you actually want to pretend that there's a bell or something when it rings, teach them what to grab and where to where the family meeting space is. So you want to have these different plans in place so that again, when these things happen, your children don't run around on the same energy as the rest of the fam uh, of rest of the world on a frenzy, and they could again just handle this with calm, with ease, um, take it seriously. You know, know that it's serious. Don't get me wrong, but we don't want our children to. It's already bad enough that we're parenting today where you actually have to parent your child at the same time that you are involved with world events that they have to be involved in. So the last thing we need to do is add more anxiety, you know, to our children or to our homes or to our existing, you know, life plan. So these things happen. It's going to continue to happen. This is the way it is. Um, yes, this is major. This is a big deal. Um, Things are shutting down. Businesses are, you know, we have to quarantine ourselves. This is something almost unprecedented in my lifetime. I've never experienced anything to this magnitude. But at the same time, we have to know that the world, this is the way our world is going, and we need to prepare our children for that. So that's what I have about all of those things, how to keep your children in the loop on caring 
current affairs, especially as health scares, some tips and some tools to do in the process. And uh, let's see. Oh, I wanted to talk about one more activity that you can put in there is this is a really good time to organize. So this is uh, springtime in most of the world, right? And most of the time we are organizing our homes, organizing, you know, different spaces. We had a special guest yesterday in the parenting lounge. Her name is Ola. She is the founder of J Adore Lee Decor. She's an interior decorator and she's her specialty is organization and giving you tips and hacks on how to make a more functional space at home, as well as creating zenfo, beautiful like pockets of experiences in your homes. And so she came on and she spoke in the parenting lounge yesterday and she said she talked about these things. And and all I kept thinking about was like, wow, this is a time where children are at our home. This is a time where parents are at home. This is our springtime. This is a time where we wish we had additional time to organize our area. So why not make it a family fun activity? You know what I mean? Put on some music, pick a room or an area together and just organize, get help the children, get them to organize their rooms, organize the kitchen, organize closets. It can be a really great activity and you could just do it in small pockets. Each day we're gonna do this, tomorrow we're gonna do this and make it into a fiesta, make it into a party so it's fun and it's not mundane. So that's another activity that you can do there. I left you a link for some activities and I also want to invite you and leave you with the link to the parenting lounge. Let's see if I can get this. Come on. The Parenting Lounge is an online membership site with like-minded families such as yourself. I am your host in there every single day. I curate posts, activities for parents, not activities, but <laughs> I hope that worked out. I think that's right. Okay. Um, I curate uh, posts and all types of activities. Well, I'm going to use the word activities for the lack of, of a better word, but it's an actual me time oasis space for you at your fingertips where you can go in there every single day and join myself or other members of the group. Um, we have weekly parenting live, which we did today, which we dive super, 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 super deep into a lot of things that are near and dear to our heart. The biggest thing about the parenting lounge is that you are more than a parent and we give you strategies, tools and tips to craft your life in a way where not only you can raise your family, but you can also reach your dreams, your goals and inspirations at the same time. I've done it myself. I'm currently still uh, doing it, even though I'm an empty nester, and I can show you how you can do that without dealing with so much of the mom guilt in, in the process. So we really love if you came out. We have Cyber Game Night monthly, and again, we have our guest speakers monthly, and then, um, yeah, it's at your fingertips. It's really amazing. My parents are having a great time in there as well as I. So if you click on the link, it is a membership site. So if you join me this month, which is March, the rate is $9.99 per month, and you will be grandfather in for that rate for the life of the group. So hopefully you can come on in and join us in the Parenting Lounge. We welcome you with open arms, and we appreciate you. So yes, so that's what I have this week. I hope you have an amazing week, and if you like to dance with me, I'm going to get up and dance my way out of here. I will be back here next Sunday, live at 5 Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for those that joined me this week. Thank you so much. I saw a few. Uh, Facebook's not showing me everybody. My apologies, but I think I saw um, Kinga. Hi, Kinga. How are you? Oh, we have some comments here. Thank you for all the hearts and love. Thank you, Sadie's. Thank you, lovely Janae. I appreciate you joining. Charlotte said, yeah, my daughter cleaned out her room yesterday. We will do this this week. Yes, this is a perfect, 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 perfect time to um, organize. I love organizing, so it comes natural to me. Um, but uh, as I mentioned before, music is the lifeblood of organizing. 
Oh, thank you, Charlotte. Charlotte is a parent in the Parenting Lounge. She said, it's amazing. She said, thanks for giving great value as always. Thank you, Charlotte, I appreciate it. Sadie, thank you for sharing. And anyone else that shared this out, I appreciate you too. Hola, Mitzi, how are you? So, so yeah, so that's what I have this week. Thank you so much for joining me. If you missed the beginning, Oh, one more thing I wanted to mention. I don't know if you, I mentioned a couple weeks ago that my love story was going to air on Fox 8 News. Um, I had so much trouble getting a link from Fox 8 News that I ended up ha was, had to be creative. And so if you saw my story Friday, I sent out to link, the link to as many places as I could, to as many people as I could. I ended up having to record that from the TV from someone that recorded my story and caught it because I wasn't able to catch it myself. And I uploaded it to my YouTube channel. So that's how I had the link. So if you want to, if you haven't seen my love story um, and you like to see it because I am currently writing my story right now and the book will be published for Valentine's Day next um, 2021. So if you're interested in seeing the um, my love story, I will post the link here. It is in the post before this one too, but I'll go ahead and just post a link in here as well since I'm in here. And you can feel free to take a look at my love story and hopefully you'll be interested in reading my book. Um, it gets a little bit more deeper about my relationship with my husband. So yes, I hope all is well. Let me get the musica going. Musica, musica. Let's do the E-Nanny Link Shuffle. You didn't know I could sing too, huh? I can sing a little bit. <laughs> I'm just joking. There's so many. I have so many personalities to myself. All right, here we go. Hopefully this is the right one. Why is it not playing? Come on. Okay, one second. Nanny Link, let's do this. I need you. Huh, it won't play. There it is. There we go. Hey, Mary, we're going to get ready to take her off. If you want to see the beginning of the story, feel free. Yes. Hope you have a happy Sunday. Happy rest of your weekend. Hope your Monday comes in really nicely and that you have an amazing week with your children. I know it's a little challenging, but it's very special to be able to have them at home if you're able to create some memories and some bonds right now. Yeah, we're fun, baby. Yes. Take care, and I'll see everybody next week, okay? Muchas gracias. Te amo. Y chao. <laughs> See everybody next week. <laughs>